the nine task force had uh, done a very extensive report. The, the, the new, the task force was appointed in 2010 or so, didn't have a lot of time uh, to get their sea legs and get the same sort of momentum going before, the, before they were done. So this group actually, in its first year, when we were all appointed and got together for the first time, which was November of 2011, I believe, um, uh, really used that 2009 report to start our work. And we do a, a yearly report to the governor, but we also take that opportunity to educate legislators as well about the state of broadband in Minnesota. The overall goal is border to border broadband at a high speed. Um, and we have kind of moved this past <coughs> year. So two sessions ago, uh, a year ago, a little more than a year ago, we actually advocated for the establishment of the Office of Broadband. Uh, and that ended up being in the Department of Employment and Economic Development, which we think is a good match in the sense that broadband is an economic development tool. Um, it, it's an agency that's used to promotion. And so this was an important thing to many people who worked on the issues. So in that case, originally Commerce was the department that oversaw us. Diane came from the Commerce Department to now come over. Maybe you're officially on leave or, or loan or something like that. No, <laughs> known to deed. So Diane and Bill Hoffman have been with us the entire time. Bill works for Connect Minnesota. Um, Dana was part of our task force and actually ended up applying for the position of executive director of broadband. She's in, been in place for about six months. Mm -hmm. And we had a pretty uh, big, bold vision of a $100 million fund during this legislative session. The, the fact, it's just part of the facts of what we are dealing with here. We focus on uh, mainly on that access, but we also have broadened our role to focus on adoption as well. <coughs> um, because in some cases, we see communities that have access to uh, good service, but people aren't adopting fast enough, or maybe in the numbers that a provider would hope they're, they're uh, adopting at. So we've been doing some work with providers, with education. We do try to go outside um, of the Twin Cities metro area to travel and talk to people in communities about what's happening. The other part of this is the access, and that's where the fund comes in and uh, the mapping that Connect, Connected Nation and Connect Minnesota have been doing about how fast a speed people have access to. So what's happened is that on the access point, uh, our realization is that, that it is a predominantly rural issue. Um, uh, adoption is an issue across the state in different communities, and so working with community leaders to push adoption, but really focused as well on that access point. And so right now, we are in the process of getting ready to make some recommendations, which will be done around the August 1st timeline for the governor and for the next legislature, because all of that happens. There's a, there's, there's a further upstream movement that people understand in that process. And so we're working on, especially if there's going to be maybe a suggestion of it, and more money going into this fund in the next two year budget by the state, we will need to make that recommendation in August. So that's a good and example. What is the fund used for? Is it a lending agency to rural or is it, you know? No, it's no. a grant fund with a one to one match for providers. Okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And so that's what Dana was talking about. The deed is, and Dana's heading up the work to establish the boundaries around the fund. Okay, I got it. Um, but largely, we will see this fund helping in points of real, places where people, they may have some service, but they really don't have service at an adequate level at all to be able to connect uh, and do the things that we would all expect you might be able to do. So we have a broad range of representation on the task force. Obviously, providers, 
uh, as well as local units of government, tribal representation, uh, communities of interest, uh, business representation, trying to get that broader point of view as to you know how we move forward together. So we work on a consensus basis. You don't see us doing things that, that we can't kind of get our hands around. And of course, once it goes out of our hands and goes towards uh, the legislature or the governor, we we can try to help guide that work, but we lose control to some degree of what the final product looks like. So, so we advocated initially for that fund. We did work to try to help shape the fund, but there's obviously a lot of pressures and needs that go into that. Sure. So does that help? Thanks.